take a look at what's in the incubator. Okay, so there's baby bulls there, but that's not who we're focusing on in this video. Instead, we're going one shelf down. And you know what? I'm just gonna pull this out. Look at that, nifty. The whole thing comes out. And take a look, we have Brad's babies hatching. Oh my goodness, oh wow, you are angry. Oh, oh wow, oh my goodness, you just keep on going. You're not gonna, you're not doing anything, dude. Would you stop it? Your teeth are getting stuck in my skin and then you're changing your mind anyway. Would you stop, stop it. Okay, you're fine, you're fine. Whoa, look at that smile. Look, it's a magic trick, I can make him smile, ready? Oh, smile for the camera. Oh, wow, oh, you're jumping for the camera. All right, let's get you out of here and let's close this door so that those don't get too cold. Okay, bull snakes. Oh my gosh, Brad and Enzo. These are gonna be big babies. Except you're really actually smaller than I thought you were gonna be. Why are you so little? Why are you so tiny? Man, you are the first one out. Yeah, look at you and you are a little spitfire. Oh my gosh. Resting your little head on my hand. Oh, you're so adorable. And you have resting snake face, we'll call it. Yes, that's where we're gonna leave it. Okay. You can go in here. Yep, one more bite to go, thank you. Have any of your siblings hatched? Uh, oh, oh my gosh, yes, look, right here. There's a pip, Oh. Okay, I have tongs, and yes, we do have tongs right here. I don't like those. They're stupid in how they bend. I don't like them. Okay, so we're gonna use these. Oh, are you breathing? I just saw a spit bubble. You were totally breathing there. Oh my gosh, and you're moving. Do you wanna come out? Oh, that's so cool. You can see him moving underneath the eggshell. Oh, hi! Hello, yeah, come on out. Are you gonna say hello to the camera? Oh my gosh, that was adorable. Okay, that's all he wants to come out, that's all right. You have also pipped, wow. These were the two questionable looking eggs and they're the first to pip. Well, after, oh, are you gonna come out even more? Yes, yes, please do. Come say hello to all of us watching you exit your egg. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. We are watching a snake hatch right in front of us. How about you? Oh, I see the spit bubbles. Wow, you cut here, 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 and up here even too. All right. Man, and this one just keeps coming out more and more. Yeah, look at you. I see your little eyeball now You're coming out to say hi. Okay, who else do we have? Oh, this one's pipped right in there. Unless, is that the one that came out? Nope, there's definitely still a baby in there. Where did you come from then? Oh, he came from way in there. You can kind of see where he pulled out his like umbil umbilical cord a little bit. Interesting, so the one wedged, would you stop biting me? The one wedged way in there was the first to hatch. Okay, so these eggs actually pipped earlier today, and since I'm not gonna be here tomorrow until later, I don't wanna miss the window where they're 24 hours old, and therefore we want to cut them to help them out in case any are stuck on the inside. I would hate to miss that window and be too late for some. I see. Oh, another kiss, thank you. Thank you for the kisses. Oh, so many kisses, you are the best. And so what I think I'm gonna do is just cut them now because I want them to have as good of a chance of living as possible. Here are our babies. Now you are just gonna be a big helper this whole time, aren't you? Yes, what a great helper, thank you. Okay, let's see, wow, there are, I mean, there were a lot of eggs. I think if I remember correctly, it was 31 eggs in this clutch, and we are left with, since some went bad, one, two, three, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So about 10, 12-ish went bad. Uh, we have one on the back, in the back here that's also bad, but it's just so stuck to everybody else that I couldn't take it off throughout incubation. So we did learn that I think it is better to separate them if you can for incubation. But you know what? We still have a decent amount that made it. So let's take a look, or at least I think they made it. Oh, would you stop it? So I'm going to move you two down here. And this was our fast food clutch. So we have like the taco here, french fries. It looks like it's upside down to you guys watching, but you can kind of tell what everything is. So we're gonna start with the taco egg. Let's see if we have a healthy baby on the inside. First thing we're gonna look at is the color of the amniotic fluid that comes out. We're looking for a clear or light yellow color. Oh, it's a little darker than I'd like, but that still could be fine. And if you're new to the channel, you might not know this yet, but there might be some blood seeping out of the cut that I'm making here. That is not from me hitting the baby, but rather there's veins that line the inside of the eggshell. So I might be nicking some of those, but the baby's ready to come out and detach from those veins anyway. So it's fine. Oh, 
Yep, we have a baby. Oh, he's really dark, but hopefully you can still kind of see him in there. Let me do the poke test, make sure he's responsive. Oh, yep, he flinched away from the tweezers. So that one is good. Next egg is the milkshake. This one's like all dented in. It looks like a raisin more than a milkshake or an egg. Milkshake baby is, oh. Interesting. I think I see a big white blob in there, which is not a baby. That looks like under un, um, absorbed yolk. So I'm not sure if there is a viable baby in this one. I see a developed baby, but there's a lot of yolk in there too. So I'm going to leave this one as is. Don't know about that one. Next is the French fry egg. I love French fries. So oh, never mind. You already you already pipped. Why'd you pip underneath the egg? What are you doing? All right here. Can I take a peek? He pipped and then pushed the yolk in the hole. Okay, you weirdo. Well, I know you're alive in there because you pipped the shell yourself. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can for sure get out. You can kind of see a baby near the top there. Right there, there's a baby. I'm gonna assume he's alive because he slit the egg on the inside. So I think that one's good to go. Oh, and this one also already pipped, but on the underside of the egg. Looks like there's another pip on the side right here. So, I mean, if this one's pipping, I know he's fine, but I think I might expand the egg a little bit or that hole just a little there we go help him out make sure he can get out when he's ready this one down here pipped definitely looks good this is the one that this feisty baby came out of already and i'm gonna move baby to the other side because these eggs i won't be able to oh never mind it will oh okay they do detach sweet never mind you could have stayed there time for the pretzel baby Ooh, the fluid looks good we've made our window and the baby is <gasps> Healthy, well, it's there, it's developed. Are you alive and healthy? Yep, oh, we are responding to the touch, so we are good, all right. Mustard baby. Oh my goodness, this one is just spilling out. Wow, look at that. It's a good color though, so I think we're all right. Mustard baby is, oh, there's a lot of O's I'm noticing with this. Oh, are you alive? This one looks lighter in color than the others, so I'm not sure. Oh yeah, it's responding. I don't think it's fully developed yet though. That's weird. It looks like it's still like fused with the yolk. So don't know what to think with that one, but we're gonna put it back, give it some time. Next up is Burrito Baby. Now all of these babies should just look like normal bull snakes because their mom is a really big normal and their dad is a red phase, but, and that should pass down to some of his babies, but the reds you don't really see when they first hatch, they kind of grow into the reds. So they develop as they mature. So today they're just gonna look like a bunch of normals and the Burrito Baby is alive, hopefully. Oh, yep. Yeah. I see him in there. Hello, can I can I do the poke test? Let's get the bubbles out of the way. Yep, oh, we're twitching. Okay, good. This egg I couldn't reach initially, so it doesn't have a mark. Um, so this is the unnamed baby, the unknown baby, I'm assuming. We still have a good baby inside. Oh yeah, with that color of fluid, we're good. Oh, I think I can already see him in there. Three, two, one. <gasps> yeah, healthy baby, it looks like. Poke test? Yep, oh, we're definitely responding. Okay, next is chicken leg, drumstick baby. Three, two, one, baby! All right, oh, I can see kind of a nose right down there. Let's see if I can do the poke test. Yep, we're moving, you're good. Okay, now I'm curious about this egg. This one is, looks like the candy bar I must have drawn on it, but it molded a bit during incubation. So I treated it with Lotrimin powder. And actually there's a debate on Facebook right now on whether Lotrimin powder actually helps save eggs or if it's a lost cause. And if babies that develop mold, are just gonna go bad anyway, no matter what you do. Now this this fluid here is kind of cloudy actually, so I had high hopes for this one because it made it all the way through incubation, but I don't know if it's actually gonna make it all out alive. So we'll see. I can feel something in it because it kind of deflated in my hands and I feel a baby at the bottom there, but are you living? Oh, it's very cloudy. You might not be alive. I don't feel movement and it's too cloudy to see any movement in response to the, the touch test. So the moldy treated with Lotrimin powder baby is gonna have to wait until tomorrow when we do another check. So I'm gonna put that one in a special place. That one's gonna go in the corner there. And I'm really curious to see if that one's gonna hatch. Here's another egg. I wasn't able to reach with the marker to mark initially. And it also molded a little bit during incubation. So I treated that with Lotrimin powder. So let's see if this one made it. Oh, this one looks good. Yeah, there's definitely a baby in that one. Let's see, poke test. 
Oh, and he's responding too. Okay, so this baby that had mold and was treated, this one made it at least, okay. Okay, now we're getting into the very bottom eggs that were buried from, or buried by all the others. This is a big egg, which usually isn't a good sign. Oh, but that's clear. Oh my gosh. Oh wow, spilling, spilling. Oh no, the, l the slower I am while it spills out like this, the harder the eggshell is to cut. Okay, you kind of need the tautness for the blade to go through it, is what I've learned. There is a, a healthy looking baby, it looks like, in there. Hard to see on camera, but there is a baby in there. We're gonna do a poke test. Oh, yep, I feel him moving on top of my fingertips there. That one's definitely good. Okay, friend, you come out when you're ready. Don't mind your sibling, who's just a big jerk. Here's another egg from the bottom of the pile. And this one is... A developed baby by the looks of it. Gosh, I'm sorry guys, it's so hard to see on camera. He is moving, I feel him moving against the, the tongs. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. You'll see more of these guys tomorrow once they come out. We have three eggs left. We have the hot dog egg, a really big egg, and this egg that looks just like a golf ball or a puff mushroom. I don't know, let's open this one first. Let's take a look. This one I also treated with Lotrimin powder because it developed a little bit of mold. Okay, golf ball egg is healthy, it looks developed. Let's see, poke test. Yeah, it's responding, all right. So that moldy egg was cured with Lotrimin powder. I assume from Lotrimin powder anyway. Maybe it didn't do it, but who knows. Two left, hot dog and big egg. Let's see what's in these. We'll save the big egg for the end. Hot dog egg is developed. Wow, oh cool, you can see the veins on this one. That's really kind of cool. Okay, baby's right here. Poke, poke, yep, we're moving. Hot dog baby's good. And the last one is this ginormous egg. Let's see what's inside. This one's gonna deflate like as soon as I poke into it. So I have to be kind of quick. Poke, oh no, it's deflating. Ah, cut a hole, Emily, cut a hole. No, it's too soft of a shell, come on. Come on, oh, don't just go that direction. I won't be able to open it. No, flip the blade around. This egg was a little bit difficult because it molded. And then it was too calcified on another spot. Let's see what's inside. Ooh, that's a tough one. From what I can tell, there's at least a partially developed baby inside, but it is very cloudy. So that one I'm also not so sure about. So we're gonna put it, here, you go over there. Our two questionable eggs are gonna be in the corners over here. So we remember, or I remember which ones they are. Gonna set hot dog on top there. It looks like we have a pretty good success, right? There's a couple I'm not sure about, and these are the two, that big one under there, and this one right here are the two that I'm least uh, confident will hatch. But I think the rest minus, and a couple others, but you know what, I think overall the eggs that are still with us are doing pretty well. And this baby was just an overachiever because he came out first. Can you encourage all of your siblings to come out so that we see a bunch of little yous slithering around and striking at my fingers? Oh, and hissing too, I can't forget that. Oh my gosh, okay. We're gonna put him back. And, that, and what's kind of cool is when the first snake comes out, the sensation of that baby slithering over the other eggs, they can feel that on the inside and that encourages them to come out. It tells them, hey, your siblings are hatching. It is time to come out of the egg. So that is why all these eggs coordinate and usually one baby comes out and then almost immediately afterwards, all the rest come out. It's really cool. We're only looking at one baby snake though, so that's kind of boring. We're gonna pop them back into the incubator until tomorrow and see how many others have come out. Okay, next day. Let's see how many babies are out. <gasps> One, two, three, four. Oh, we have four babies out from Brad's clutch. Look at you. Hi, baby. Oh, you're such a cute little baby bull snake. Oh my gosh. You know, uh, there's so many fancy morphs of bull snakes out there, but I still just love this basic wild type coloration. I mean, the contrast between the, the browns and the almost yellows there is just gorgeous. And these babies, with their dad being Enzo, which is a red line bull snake, these might actually be kind of reddish too as they get older. Oh, come here, I wanna check out all of you. Oh, you are a flighty one. Okay, you do you. Here's number two that is out. You look amazing too. You're not as sassy now that you're in my hand, are you? Oh, never mind. you're just as sassy. Oh, you're so big. Oh my gosh, you're gonna fall off. You're so wobbly still. Oh, okay, okay, fine, I'll put you back in here. Oh, the little baby hisses, I love it. Here's a nice baby. Oh, it still has that baby sheen too. You can kind of see the sheen and the scales. That's the only time you see that in a baby bull snake, or in a bull snake at all, is right before their first shed. They kind of have that baby sheen still. I love it. And they smell so good too. Oh my goodness, you. Wow, that brings back memories. 
Holy cow, that brings me back to our first clutch of bull snakes. Your smell, holy moly, okay, that was, that's kinda cool. Who else has decided to come out? Looks like nobody is hipping or at least sticking their heads out so what we're gonna do is leave them be for another day or two and i'm gonna let these four encourage their siblings to come out by the way the tripping in the background is from a beautiful little parakeet named blueberry who is just here in the classroom temporarily but yeah i think i'm gonna pop these babies back into the incubator for another day we'll check on them uh, when some more babies have come out and then we'll set up baby bins There's lots of babies in there. Lots of babies. Okay, Brad's babies I think are all out. And now we finally will get that final count. Unfortunately, they did sit in the incubator for about four days, I would say. And there are a few gnats in here, so. Yeah, I tried to get rid of the most of uh, them, but. Yeah, so wow, that. look at that one. Holy moly, wow. look at you. That one already shed. You are beautiful. Wow. Look at how bright yellow you are. Wow, that is. Especially a... compared to like, ah, huh. let's go with this one. Look how oh. boring this one is in comparison. Look at this one too. Oh, he's shedding right now. Wow, this one already has some red hues in it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That one just hasn't shed yet. So that way, uh, that one has that baby shade still. I still say he's boring. Go away. Boring? No, he's not boring. No, look, but look at this oh, one. What a cute little baby wow. you are. Okay, so that one is yellow. That one's really gorgeous. That one has a lot of reds too. I bet a lot of these will after their first sheds. That's true. Yeah, well, I mean, do you want to come out and say hi? Oh, oh. really? Are you going to be a sassy baby? Great. Oh, you're shedding right now too. I guess everybody is yeah. shedding. Before. After. Yeah, he can definitely see the color difference. It's like wow. blacks with browns, yeah. Oh my gosh, look at all these Thank babies. You. Oh my gosh, handful of baby bull snakes. <gasps> they smell so good. I love the baby smell. Oh, look at this one's pattern. Sorry, there's so many here. I keep getting distracted. That one kind of has like diamonds down mm -hmm. its back. That one's really one's pretty. Coming to see you too now. Hello. You're such a sweetheart. You're a very curious little bull snake and you're so pretty. You're gonna be really red as an adult. Oh, so when people buy these, they can maybe ask for one with higher red or one with less red, I suppose. How many can I hold? I bet we can get all of them. You think all of them? Yeah. Yes! I feel so powerful. I have the whole clutch in my hands. Oh my gosh. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> Let's count them yes. and see how many there actually are. Cause I still don't know. Maybe, do you want to like put them down in there one at a time and we'll count them? Sure. Okay. Right. Oh, they're so cute. There's this is, so many of them. There's a lot of weight here, like oh, pure I'm, baby bull snake. I believe that. Oh my gosh. It's just the camera so I can start counting. I'm pretty sure this is the most I've ever held. We got one baby, two babies, three babies, 18, 19, 20. 20. And even 20 babies, okay. There's 20 whole babies. Other snake breeders out there, beat that. Take a picture holding more than 20 baby snakes in your hands. Okay, or anybody for that matter. I think my favorite one, where did like he that go? One. That one is really pretty. This one has some nice browns and some nice reds in them. And yellows. And yellows, yeah, that one's really pretty. But there's another one that also caught my eye. This one right here. This one is also gorgeous. Look at the browns behind his head. That's just so pretty. Oh my gosh, the browns, the yellows, the cool pattern. He's a cute little guy. And he's currently shedding. Here, let yeah. me help you out. Do you need help shedding? We'll just uh, help you out here. And ta-da! Freshly shed! Now look at you! So pretty with those browns! Okay, well it looks like everybody is out. I don't think there's any babies left behind. There isn't the bad egg, but that's not a surprise. We knew that egg had already gone bad. Everybody else has hatched. So let's fit officially put them in their baby bins. All I can fit on this table right now are 10 bins, and that's half of the babies that we have right now. This is a ridiculous amount of babies. Brad? Can you imagine if we got all 30? Yeah, oh my gosh. I'm kind of glad that some of the eggs went bad. <laughs> all right, so just like usual, we are going to put a paper towel on the bottom. We're going to mist down the paper towels. And in the back of the bin, which will be the heated side, we are going to put a nice cave for the snakes. There's an opening on the sides here. We're gonna put a nice cave here and then they can be hidden and warm. And these are a new style of sugar packet container, like we are pretty, pretty much always use for smaller snakes. It works really well because it's a nice dark cave for them, has a couple of openings on the sides. I'd wish it only had one opening, but beggars can't be choosers. But this new style has an indent on top, so they can kind of curl up on it, I figure. We'll see if they end up using it like that or not, but it's an extra level that kind of adds some volume to this little baby bin of theirs. Now we're going to add 
PVC caps, which Ed just went to Menards and bought these caps. They were great as water dishes. We ran out though recently, so Ed bought, what, 38 of these just now? Uh, I think so, 38. Did the cashier look at you funny when you just bought 38 PVC I mean, caps and that was it? He just kind of scanned them one at a time and oh, it took forever. I bet. But I think he was, comp he kept looking at the screen to see if they were the same thing. So, oh really? Uh, nice. He's probably seen worse. And then in the middle of the cave and the water dish, we are going to add a couple of things. We're going to add a rock for the babies to rub up against and shed. It also helps hold down the paper towel. And last but not least, since we like to keep them pretty simple, Simple for ease of cleaning and these are temporary bins until the babies just eat enough before they get sold and sent to their new homes but we still want to add a little bit of enrichment so that takes the form of fake flowers fake plants you never really know it all works as good enrichment for baby snakes Bins. All right, so now the only thing that's missing on these is a tag on the front that shows the hatch date, the snake's parents, the species of the snake, a morph if it were a morph, not in today's case, but that would be on there normally too, as well as the empty space to fill in with dates that they have fed. So it's kind of our little ID meal tracker that we put on the, on the cards, and it's associated with each snake, and it goes home with the snake too. So now it's time to put 20 baby bull snakes into their baby bins. This is so many bins. Yeah, all the ones pulled out need to have a bull snake put in them. We're like filling half of this rack with just Brad's babies. Yeah, with just boring, normal, <laughs> one pretty, all the others are ugly They're not bull ugly. snakes. They're ugly. They're all special okay, in their you're own You're the way. pretty one. You're no. the pretty one of the group. They're... You're going to have a good life because you're pretty. Oh, they're all yes. pretty. They're all pretty. Not as pretty as this one. <laughs> not as beautiful as you. <laughs> What's that from? Comment if you know what that's from. Look at the way they foam at the mouth. <laughs> not as beautiful as you. <laughs> Okay, I'll, guys, let go of each I'll other. Just dump this one in here. Okay. He gets an upscale apartment. Does he? Yeah. And the last baby is going in this bin. And in. Nice. So, next thing we have to do is put water in and put tags on them. Yeah, and then they're set. Yeah. So something interesting actually happened to their mom, Brad. She had surgery today. So yeah. we're gonna show you what ended up happening. This is Brad. This is the mom. She's the mom of the very first clutch of bull snakes we ever hatched. We bred her to Janet, who was my very first snake. We thought he was a girl at first, hence his name Janet. So when we got him a girlfriend, we named her Brad. Janet has sadly since passed away. He was an old man, but we do still have Brad yeah. and she is a tank of a bull snake. She's starting to get up there in age and she, a couple years ago, a couple years? No, was, last year. I think year. it was two years ago. Uh, two years ago during brumation. Yeah. She developed a lump on her side yep. and we had to pull her out of brumation to have it surgically removed. And then we decided not to breed her that following spring yep. because we wanted her to heal from surgery. Well, it, we bred her this year and she obviously had eggs that hatched, but she started developing another lump. And yeah. today, the day we are filming those baby bull snakes, because they just hatched, she had a surgical procedure again yep. to remove the new one. There's the little area. There we go. There's That's the, th the area. Yep. There's the surgical site. Yep. And I mean, because there's probably some people out there who would be curious, including myself. Here's the lump that our vet yeah. took off of her. That's the lump. Look at the that. big lump. That came off of her today. I wasn't present during the surgery because um, I had to do meet and greet. What did our vet say? Did he say anything about the lump? Oh, it's cancers. Oh. Yeah, she's got cancer. Oh, That's really? what the reason was that she had the first one. Oh. It's, a, it's not a muscular cancer. It's on the X. It's in the dermal layer. Oh, so it's not in her bloodstream? So it's not in her bloodstream. It's okay. just there. She'll just keep getting them, unfortunately, really? until she passes. Is actually, what he said. I actually didn't know that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did not hear that it was cancer, but... Yeah. I mean, he can't tell us for sure what it is, but it it's a tumorous like cancer. It's yeah. cancerous tumor. Aww. 
Because it's regrown now. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, we have her on antibiotics to heal up from this second surgery. And yep. I guess now I know she might just get more of them. Yep. We just have to keep an eye on them. Yep. She is up there in age. She's not terribly old. She's in her mid to upper teens, which is uh, probably upper teens by now. She was one of our first snakes. Um, so that is up there for a bull snake. Uh, but we still should have, you know, several years left with her. Yeah. So we're going to give her the rest of this year, obviously, to heal up. And we will decide next year if she looks good enough to breed. But that's an entire year in the future. And she would probably ovulate anyway. So yeah. there's a good chance she'll still breed and next year. she doesn't year. stop. She's still a tank. She doesn't know anything. Oh, different. yeah, that's true. She's I acting mean, totally fine. She went through surgery today. Yeah. And she's sitting there going, eh, you got food for me? Yeah, she was begging for food before yeah. as I was taking her out. Yeah. So, yeah, she is acting totally yeah. normal. But, yeah, there's Bradley for you. And this is an example of how big those babies are going to get because their dad, Enzo, who's who looks like her, just a little bit more red since he's a red morph. He lives in our zoo. He and her are huge, so these babies will get big too. So I am very excited for these little babies. I'm excited to get updates, hopefully, from their new parents, who we will ship them to after they've taken about four to five meals successfully for us. Yep. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Patreon backers, for your amazing support. And thank you, Brad, for giving us, oh, oh. for giving us babies. Oh yeah. Thank so, you, little girl. Sorry you had surgery. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll put you back. <laughs>